Welcome back. On our interview segment, Dr. Mark Ofua of Wild Africa Fund gives insight into the proactive measures and of course innovative projects being carried out by Wild Africa Fund in Zimbabwe and in Nigeria in collaboration with host communities to mitigate against the impact of human elephant conflict in those communities. Hear him. The human elephant conflict is abundant anywhere you have elephants because uh, there must be that interface with humans. Now, in their course of migrations, these elephants are usually deep in the forest or deep in the savannas and they cause very little damage. The cause of conflict is usually very little. But every once in a while, in their course of migration, they wander into human communities and this is where the crisis takes place. Now, do not forget humans in establishing communities have gone into the routes, the migration routes of these elephants and caused a fragmentation of their, of their grazing routes. So you find the elephants going through communities that used to, where their routes used to be. And that is where crisis um, occurs. Now you have this crisis in Nigeria, majorly in the northern region of um, um, Bauchi, where you have the Yankari Game Reserve. We have um, some families of elephants there. And the communities around there, there is this clash that is always, always going on. And then down south, we have another uh, set of elephants, forest elephants. Um, that is in the Itasin forest um, of Ogun State and Lagos, the border between Ogun State and um, Lagos, the Itasin forest. And these uh, crises, these clashes always happen there. I recall a story where a young man actually took a loan of seven million naira to go and start a farm. I mean, that is enterprising and all that. And the farm was doing well. And in one night, elephants came and leveled the farm. Now, what does he say to his uh, creditors? Will he just walk to them and say, ah, it's elephant or, or something, you know? So uh, unfortunately, the young man was enraged and he killed one of the elephants. He got his gun and killed one of the elephants. And when he was accosted, he said, he needed to show proof to his creditors that it was the elephants that leveled his crops. That's why he killed one of the um, elephants. So in Nigeria, these areas are the hotspots for um, human elephant um, crisis. Even down to, up not down to Kianji, you still have some elephant activities there and you have this um, conflict going on there. Okay, so what are some of the practical ways communities can protect their crops and property from elephants? Ah, well, now, in as much as um, these communities, the farmers, they have come to see the elephants as enemy of progress, we as conservationists must try to understand their plights. They are not necessarily evil. They are not um, trying to decimate the elephants of the world. That is not their primary aim. Um, they are not out there to cause havoc. What they are just trying to do is they are trying to, to preserve their means of livelihood. And for this reason, understanding is very key. Now, the government must um, work with NGOs like the Wild Africa Fund, collaborate with them, and enhance their work to see that this um, impasse is reduced to the barest minimum, this conflict that they are reduced to the barest minimum. One of the ways to do this is education. Education, education, education. We cannot overemphasize the need for education. You see, we really need to go to these communities and let them know, not just through media. Media plays a very important role in letting them know the value of these um, elephants. But we also need to go there as pastors, as ministers, as preachers of conservation to let them know that the survival of these elephants is directly proportional to their survival. For example, we can, the government can take tourism, develop tourism in these regions such that the community do not only depend on agric produce for survival, but tourism. If they begin to harvest from tourism, they would not see the elephants as enemies again. If they begin to harvest from tourism brought in by elephants, they would not see the elephants as, uh, as, as enemies. 
Now in Kenya, the Maasai used to be very good farmers. Uh, they farm cattle and also crops. But right now, as we speak, they have totally stopped farming crops because of the elephants. They realize that these crops bring the elephants close to their communities. So they have stopped that. And how do they survive? From tourism. They make a very, very healthy income from tourism. In short, Nigeria is losing about $25 million annually from not, having, uh, from not nursing the power of tourism, ecotourism here in Nigeria. So we can bring this solution to the, to the farmers and let them know that, oh, tourism brought in by these elephants can be another source of income. You really do not need to depend on agriculture only. Now, that is one. Then another, work, uh, uh, another method that um, the Wild African Fund has brought in to reduce this uh, um, human-elephant conflict is the development of elephant deterrents. Now, we have lots of deterrents available. Some, the technology is usually too expensive for communities and farmers to access. And then others is usually chemicals that is dangerous or inimical to the health of the environment. But the Wild African Fund, with her partners, have been able to develop a, 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 an elephant um, deterrent that is healthy to the environment and it is cheap for the farmers to access because it is produced from materials that are naturally around us. So with this um, uh, um, uh, mixture that is developed, we teach the farmers how to do it actually and all that. You can see that they put this, it's, this is, it's been done in Zimbabwe and it has given us very, very good success. They just put these deterrents in bottles and put around the farms. And once these ele elephants smell these um, deterrents, they move very far away. They don't want anything to do with that region again. So if we can get this here in our local communities, um, get people to sponsor this um, uh, um, um, uh, production of these deterrents, introduce it to the local communities, and they use it to protect their farms and their villages, you find out that this um, elephant's um, human conflict would reduce to a bare minimum. And then um, there's another method, which is um, actually not planting at the fringes of the forest, which is the normal thing. I mean, you have communities and then they grew their farms very close and into the forest. And what that means is it's just a stroll away for the elephants to come and slacken the farms. So if all these are put in place and then awareness via the mass media to let people know the benefit of these elephants to us, the economical and the ecological benefits, and also promote ecotourism. Nigerians, believe me, spend millions of dollars every year going to other countries for safari to go and see these elephants while we have these elephants right here with us in Nigeria. So if we promote local ecotourism, you find out that the, the, the trade would increase, um, um, uh, monies would go into tourism, the local and host communities will get this uh, income from tourism, and they will learn to see the elephants as friends.